Welcome everybody to today's Building My Legacy podcast. I have with me today, Russ Morgan and Joey Muir. They have a company called Wealth Without Wall Street. And I think we all look at wealth. We think Wall Street is part of it. Banks, Wall Street, everything big, right, is part of having wealth. And they have a perspective that's different. And so Joey and Russ, would you just share with the audience, how did the two of you get together? How did you find each other? And why wealth without Wall Street? Well, um, thank you so much for having us, Lois. I'll, I'll start us off. So um, I would say the bigger picture about having us on a show about legacy is really, really uh, poignant because it, our whole community, Wealth Without Wall Street, exists because of my story. And it really starts back when I was in the mortgage business uh, for 11 years and was working myself to death. Now, I wouldn't have told you that. I would have told you, man, I feel successful. My income is increasing every year. I'm, I'm needed. I'm important. Um, moving up the corporate ladder at a, at a large um, Fortune 50 bank. But I got introduced to some things along the way by Russ. That's why he's here. I, I let him come along with me. Um, just, <laughs> that's a joke. We, we joke a lot. But Wealth of That Wall Street exists because my legacy got really shifted around finances in 2009. And it was because he handed me this book and he said, Joey, if I'm going to start referring you business, you got to read this book. You got to know what my clients are learning because I don't want you to, to you know, tell them the wrong thing. And he said, by the way, it's $20. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. You want me to read the book? Like you want me to have this knowledge so that I can help you? It with your clients and you're going to charge me $20. This, like how bad are you doing? Right this now? was the early days of Amazon. I was delivering things same day. Like, I mean, I gave, <laughs> this is, I, there's no discounts in the book, nor the delivery, <laughs> but, but I am forever grateful because when I read that book, it dramatically changed the way I thought about financial success, financial freedom, and how to obtain the life that I truly wanted. And, and what I had really done is what so many entrepreneurs and so many high level successful CEOs and otherwise have done as I started trading my time for money at a higher level. And so I was mistaken in thinking that, oh, my income is going up. So I've, you know, that's what financial success is. But really and truly what it was is it was, it was adding more and more time to my job and less time to my family to the point and I don't know if any of you um, can relate to this, but I was that guy that was at dinner with his phone under the table, just texting somebody back really quick while my wife went to the bathroom or at, at the point where I was at vacation at the beach and my wife and kids are all dressed up. It took us two hours to get everybody's bathing suits on and lathered up in sunscreen and all the things. And I get a phone call. And that, that voice in my head says, if you don't take this phone call, business is going to dry up over here. You have to take that call. So, hey, babe, um, why don't you guys head down to the beach? It, I'll be right behind you. I've got to take this call and uh, just give me like 10 minutes and I'll be off. And an hour and a half later, I joined them. All the kids have played what they're going to play on the beach. My wife's, you know, all burn up from being in the sun for that long. And she's pissed that I'm the guy that's supposed to be with us present. And I'm sitting there on vacation on my phone. And the true way to freedom came when I started realizing that that was coming. That's what was keeping me back was I was trading time for money at just a higher multiple. And so anyways, I'm grateful that Russ shared with me these things and we started implementing them over a course of about four years to the point where I went to my wife and I said, you know what? I feel like God's calling me to go and teach this. Like this has made such a big impact. And let me give you the picture. She's pregnant with our fourth daughter at the time. I'm making over $300,000 a year and she doesn't have to work outside of the home. And I say, Hey, by the way, I'm giving all this up because I want to go start this business fresh from scratch. And I'm like sitting there wondering, what is she thinking? What is she going to do? <laughs> I'm kind of like bracing for impact. 
And the first words out of her mouth were, you absolutely should do that. Wow. And, and you know what? At the time, I just thought it was because she was so supportive of me and she just loved me so much and she believed in me. And the reality was she was like, she told me this three or four years later. You could have told me you were going to go be a garbage man. Whatever I had, you had to do to get out from that job you were in that was going to give you back to our family is what I wanted. And that just shook me up. I mean, that was that was a wake up call that said I had slowly allowed the mistress of work to take me away from what I thought I was working so hard for. And so for that, I'm very grateful. This legacy is different. Um, and, and that's what we're able to do. We're able to help people see their finances and their personal financial freedom goals as a, a legacy that they can change. Um, it's not something they have to just put off of and defer until they're in their 60s and 70s. So before you go on, what was the book? I have to know the name of the book. <laughs> well, it's, a, uh, it's only 88 pages long. So that was, that was perfect uh, length for me. And it's called Becoming Your Own Banker by R. Nelson Nash. And uh, he, he ended up being one of our personal mentors for many years because he lived right here in Birmingham, Alabama. And um, we didn't realize that at the time when Russ got the book, he was like, had gone all around the country learning all these financial things and then turned over the book he was given and the guy lived in Birmingham in his own town. So it was wow. kind of crazy. Wow. Thank you for that. Well, Lois, Joey does such a great job telling how we got together that I don't know if I could top it. Um, <laughs> I was going to try though. It, it's the one time that I get an opportunity to be kind of boosted up by him because in our podcast, we, we take uh, pop shots at each other constantly, <laughs> but I, I am definitely grateful that he was the best client and took more action and was dedicated to the process that I had just recently learned right before I gave him the book. I had been a certified financial planner, had been in the, uh, the financial world doing exactly what we, we teach not to do now because I had been taught from the financial world how to do those things. And I assumed that everything I'd been taught was right. Why would someone teach me something that wasn't right? And it took the financial markets crashing all around me and me seeing how little control I had in the process and my clients looking to me for answers and me looking to people for answers and those people looking to people for answers and nobody had answers. And that was just not okay. I, I, I like many like to be in control and I would like to, to think that I knew what, what I was doing, but it took that around me to really let me know that I was I was just a pawn in a, in a bigger chess game and, and I really didn't have the ability to make decisions and to make impacts. And thankfully I, as Joey said, I, I was at a conference where, you know, different financial insights were being shared. This was not group think this was individuals. This was not top down taught by mutual fund companies, um, investment houses, things like that, where a lot of the, information, I would almost say propaganda had been taught to me as I was through my, my, you know, schooling part of this. And I, I did meet a man who, who wrote that book, becoming your own banker. And it was just the, the start kind of the first domino to fall for me to see what opportunities look like. And, and so it's been a, it's been a fun mission. That was in January of 2009, where I actually was at that conference. And for for the last 12, 13 years, Joey and I have been on a mission to, to set the world free of the bondage that Wall Street has created and to show them that you don't have to defer life. There's a way to become financially free um, that has nothing to do with 59 and a half or 65 or whatever the magical age we're given at the time. So you talk about a three-step process for that financial freedom. Would you share what that is and it'd be fun to hear and to talk about it. Yeah, for sure. I'd love to. I, I'll, I'll start it, Joey. You can maybe fill in the gaps there. So we, we kind of are simple minded. We're both from Alabama, as you might already have told, figured that out. Our, our Northeastern accents um, were, were given up a long time ago. 
And we, we look at the kind of the navigating this process. So we came up with GPS as our three steps. So the first step is goal. And while that seems very simple uh, and maybe elementary to most people that you would have a financial goal, I dare to ask most people to show me the financial goals that you have in life, the, the things that you treasure the most. Show me, show me where you've written those down. And if you do show me, I'll, I know what your future looks like because we've seen so many people have done it and been able to actually uh, fulfill what they've written down. So we, we talk about a goal as one of the first steps, most important step for people to have crystal clear clarity on what they would want to be, do, and have if they were financially free. And we take people actually through a, a three-day challenge to, to help them get that because we think it's so valuable to, to know who do we need to become because so often there's things that we need to do. This is not a, an easy button approach. And Wall Street has taught us that we can join a company, we can you know be auto-enrolled in a 401k, and before you know it, we're going to be um, 401k millionaires kind of thing, right? And it's all taken care of. But the reality is that doesn't happen. And if people knew how much money they really had to have to be financially free through that approach, they probably would give up. And unfortunately, so many people do when they at some point ask that question. So we, we teach in goal how to have crystal clear, crystal clear clarity. Uh, step two is, is plan. And we think that having a step-by-step -step way to actually accomplish the goals that you set out is valuable. And while we, we don't believe financial advice is something to be taken because it's really just opinions, everyone has one, doesn't mean you should take theirs. But we do believe having mentors and uh, examples that you resonate with in front of you that help you then take steps to get there. And so we, we share in our plan part how someone can become the investor um, and not, not focused on the investment. Uh, one of the uh, mentors that we have, not someone we've ever met, but through books, right? You have mentors that people that you know in life and some that come through books. One of our mentors through books are Robert Kiyosaki, the author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Cashflow Quadrant, and many others. And he has a famous phrase that says, there's no good or bad investments. There's just good and bad investors. And so in our plan, part of our, you know, our process, we teach people how to become a good investor and what a good investor would look like. And so that way, when you're seeking investments that would create passive income, you would know which one would match up with your investor DNA. And then the last uh, of the three steps is support. And most people, unfortunately, even with goals and even with great plans, without a, a support system around them can be pulled back into the fray because unfortunately, the majority of Americans um, and the, probably those that you're, uh, that are listening to this or your friends are not necessarily on the same path that you want to be on. And as time goes on, we, we tend to fall back into those neurological ruts that we were in before. There's a great video of, on this that I, I love um, by a group called Smarter Every Day. It's called The Backwards Bicycle. It's a seven minute YouTube video that talks about how um, our, our brains are designed as, a, as time goes on to create these ruts. And unfortunately, we fall back into doing exactly the things that we didn't want to do, um, thinking that we're getting out of what we uh, wanted to accomplish. So we built a whole community, a whole cult. A coaching platform to help people get from 0% passive income all the way as much as 250% of their monthly expenses and passive income. And uh, we, we've built a whole support piece uh, to help people do that. So you don't invest people's money. It's a process you teach. So, um, so people find their own investments. Is that correct? How how do how do you go about this so that people actually grow their their passive income? Well, so I'll jump in, Lois, and it really comes down to, and I'll I'll give a little bit more meat to the bones as far as what Russ just gave as the overview. So when people get very clear, and I think part of it is they have to have the license to dream, to even know that it's possible, to you know, quote unquote, have freedom, or what most people would call retirement, the freedom is, man, I could be doing something different with my time. 
that allows me to have more of my time. So some people are just stuck, as Russ said, in the rut. And they're just trading time for money every single day. And they say, well, the only option I have is, man, there's this magical date, 65, 70, whatever the number of the day is, where I'm going to be free to use my time how I want. And what we're saying is you have to, one, know it's possible. And we interview people on our podcast all the time who have obtained financial freedom so that you know we're not just making this up, right? Like this is possible and it's doable in a relatively short amount of time. And I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, one, one of our clients, um, was he, he drove a uh, excavator every single day. And this is out in Utah. And he said, you know what? I listen to podcasts when I'm in this excavator because what else are you going to do? You're just pushing dirt around. And he said, he heard our podcast. He said, I really want to get started on this. After about a year of starting to follow the first steps, getting clear on his, on his um, goal, and then starting to implement a plan, he realized, well, he, one, he got hurt. He broke his leg. And as he was laying on the stretcher, basically getting airlifted out of a, a, a mountain in Utah, he realized, man, you know what? These guys, Russ and Joey, were talking about land flipping as a possible way to create passive income. He's like, I'm going to have time <laughs> over the next couple of months since my leg is broken to maybe learn about this. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start taking some steps. So he got really clear on the goal and he said, let, let me start with this land flipping stuff. And he, in his mind, what was really driving him, and this is really important, the why behind the whole process was his wife was a nurse. They had a growing family. And he said, we really want my wife to be able to stay home from work. We don't want her to have to go to work because we want her to be here to invest in our children. And so in about 18 months, after he started the whole process, they had created enough passive income from land flipping that she did not have to go back to work. And, and if I if I can jump in there, Joey, I think this is important where so often people hear us talking about what we're doing because we're very open on our podcast to share our own passive income report. And they will look at it and say, well, why don't I just do one of these items, right? And, and they... You might imagine they want to pick the one that's producing the highest revenue that month. <laughs> Very similar, probably the way most people pick the mutual funds they're going to invest in on their 401k. They look at the statement and they see which one had the highest return for the last one, three, five years ago. Yes, that one is the one I want to do. Right. I mean, that's very easy as where our brains operate. Well, for for this individual, when he had a goal of getting his wife not to go to work, he had to build a step-by-step -step plan to do that. Well, the first step was, who are you? And he had to define, and he went through a process that we helped build out that helped define him as an investor. And, and so we take you know, a whole list of investment opportunities, and we match that against someone's investor DNA is what we call it, their profile. And for him, the things that he was really good at, he's very hands-on. As he was saying, he's a small business owner. He operates a big construction company, and he ends up spending a lot of his time running the ex excavator equipment. And he said, well, I'm kind of a hands-on guy. And so he wanted to find something that he could actually put his hands on. Well, this is a business, this business of buying and selling raw land was not only something that he was familiar with because he owned a lot of raw land himself, but also he knew that he was in the business of talking to business owners. That was his job as being a small business owner. And so he matched up his profile with that. And he said, oh, this seems like something that matches who I am. Now, he knew nothing about it, but he could see from the investor DNA and us comparing the pros, cons, and key factors of that specific investment, this is one I probably could do. And so then he went through the process of educating himself of how to do it. And it's not shocking to us that he was able to not only accomplish his goal of getting his wife out of the workforce within 18 months, because he could follow a very specific process and use his gifts and talents for something that was already a proven process. And that's what most of our audience, as they come through this process, they, they might come in with the idea of choosing 
short-term rental, by using Airbnb to put their homes or you know their vacation homes or whatever uh, and market those. But then once they go through the process, they realize they're not really gifted in those areas. And that would be a really bad one. Maybe they're more gifted in building an online e-commerce space and going through a process like that or many others. And so that's a, for us, finding the investment is actually the easy thing. It's not the hard thing, but it's, if you get the order out of, out of whack, and unfortunately we are guinea pigs and getting the order out of whack, we picked investments based upon the interest level of them and realized later that our, once we went through this investor DNA process that, oh yes, this doesn't match us at all. No wonder it's not working very well. So what I'm hearing you say is you have a list of a number of investment possibilities that have proven to be good. They're not necessarily real estate or land specific. It's a huge variety of things. Is that correct? It is. It's things that we have curated over a number of about four years and many of which we've actually personally done ourselves. And that's just a starting point, really, because as you listen to our podcast and as you um, start to open yourself up to these opportunities, you will start seeing way more possibilities than what we have come up with on a list. That's the key here is we're, we're in our process. We're putting people in a position where they have access to cash. And uh, Lois, what we figured out is that the reason why most people, the number one reason why most people are not financially free is they don't have access to cash. Right. Because if they did, opportunities would find them. And they would start to make in decisions and not abdicate that to Wall Street about what's a good investment. I would they say would, they would they be would, forced to make decisions. Yeah, exactly. They would have to say, hey, um, this dollar has to go do this. And they would be in a position of responsibility. But what Wall Street has taught us is, oh, you don't have to do that. In fact, you're not even really smart enough to do that. You need to abdicate that responsibility to us. We'll take it on. We'll grow your portfolio. And, uh, oh, by the way, if we lose money, you can't hold us responsible. <laughs> it's really a, a crazy, a crazy thing we've been duped into. I think the concept of passive income is huge. You also talk a little bit about where do you store that cash, that money, once you make it. Talk a little bit about that. Yes, that, that's a, a big part of the story behind the book that I gave Joey, that, that concept of becoming your own banker. And this is really interesting. Joey was working, as he mentioned, at a, a Fortune 50 company. It was one of the, the U.S.'s top three banks. And as I was reading through this book, I was learning what banks who deal in money, that's their business, right? Deal in cash what they do with their cash. And um, I was teaching Joey this. I said, did you know um, that Wells Fargo, the bank that you work at, is putting 18 to $20 billion away in something called dividend paying whole life insurance? And just as you might imagine, and most people who are listening to this probably just was like, wait a second, did he say billion or million? And it was billion with a B. And that that concept that the book was sharing and was just so eloquently just saying banks make money because they have access to money and they use that money to make more money. And he was just teaching me in that book how to do that same concept. And so I just started sharing that with Joey and the process of having access to our cash is important, but we just can't stick it underneath our mattress. And I don't think many people would argue with us that their savings account and checking in accounts aren't uh, very favorable and not, the, you know, not the best places to, to get return and everything else. And so what we, we were learning just by emulating the most successful businesses in our nation is that we could put our, our cash at work inside of these contracts, but yet be able to still use it. And that was a foreign concept to me because every, everything I'd done to that point was trying to find ways to get a dollar to do one job. Uh, I don't know um, if you if you know many people with a Tesla, but I, I have a few friends who have bought them, and I'm always enamored by the fact that these cars can drive themselves, and allows them 
to do multiple jobs. One of my my friends is an architect and he he sometimes has to travel from Birmingham to Atlanta and he loves the fact that his car can literally drive him there while he can be working on the project for the meeting that he's going to be having while he's in Atlanta. And that to me is the really just a really simple analogy of how you can be doing two things at once. And what that book had laid out for me and I shared with Joey is that we need to have our dollars doing two things at once. We need to have our dollars earning a, a fair interest rate, not zero to 1% like our checking and savings accounts do, maybe three to 4%. But more importantly, that dollar could also be, in, be used to go buy real estate or to start a new business or to invest in a business that we already own that's creating a, a return of its own. And the dollars that come from that can replenish those accounts and be used to grow and grow and grow. And and so that is a big part of where we store cash is using this concept and using the same tools that the most wealthy and elite business uh, use, just obviously at a little smaller numbers. And we haven't gotten to the billions yet, but we're, <laughs> we have big dreams. Well, and, and as you do this, Lois, is kind of what I was talking about in the process. When people start, usually their biggest question is, well, what do you guys invest in? Like how, how, I don't even see these opportunities. And the reason is, again, they don't personally have access to cash because they've been told year in, year out, go put your money over here in this 401k, put your money here in paying extra on your mortgage, put, your, put extra money on paying off debts and all these things. And they don't have access to cash. But when they start to shift their thinking to, I need financial freedom today, they start putting money into these contracts like we're talking about in the system of policies that they can then use to tell it what to do. All of a sudden, the way they think and the opportunities that they see become abundant. And that's what happened for me. And that's what has we've been kind of outlining as our process um, since then. So part of what I'm hearing you say is you use insurance build cash there and you borrow from yourself, pay it back, continue that cycle. Is, am I hearing you correctly? Yes. It, and, and then the basic level, it's, if it's okay, I'll correct a little technical Please. thing that unfortunately gets misused and misspoken and, and, and not that you did it purposefully, but there is no such thing as borrowing from yourself. That doesn't exist. Um, that is a, a, a phrase that unfortunately some people use in our industry. That's not true. We put our money on deposit with insurance companies that have been in, in existence for 150 to 200 years. And, and I, I don't know about you, but I, I like the safety of my cash always being available and not worrying, will it come back, right? Most people are more interested uh, on return, uh, on, you know, own their money. I, I'm more interested in return of my money, <laughs> right? And so um, we use institutions that have been around through every financial crisis that our countries uh, have gone through and have weathered all of those storms. We feel really good about where our money is and we deposit it with them. And in turn, they allow us to borrow against that cash. And the reason they do, because it is the safest tool. It's the same tool that banks can borrow against as well. And so we borrow, we actually, uh, the insurance company is paying us interest and dividends on our cash. At the same time, we borrow against it. And this is really important because I came from a financial planner mindset of eliminating debts at all costs. And sometimes even as believers, we, 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 le we learn in the Bible that we never to be a slave to the lender. And sometimes we believe that debt is bad in all, in all regards. But an insurance company calls it a loan, but yet there is no credit form. There is no monthly um, payment that I have to make. These are, it's a pure borrow, a, a loan against my death benefit. So it's actually another way of saying that it's a prepayment of my death benefit. And I don't know many people that, that you, that you know, that actually get to use their death benefit while they're living, but we do that constantly. Um, but it's just a, a tool for us to then take that money and go do stuff else. So the, the process that you were talking about, I do always like to correct that though, because People ask, well, Russ, how are you earning interest on your money while you're investing in all of these other things as well? And it's because my money is not being impacted. My compounding of the interest in that account is never stopped. I never withdraw it. I actually let it continue to compound. And while I do pay insurance companies interest, 
which most of that I can deduct. At least that's what my CPAs and tax attorneys keep telling me, and I'll do it as long as they tell me to do that. Um, I have the insurance company's money at work. The same exact thing that banks do, right? They take your money, Lois, and they they pay you interest to borrow it from you when you put it in their checking and savings accounts. And then what do they do? They take that money that they are paying you interest on and they go lend it to Joey and, and bring interest in from him. And whatever the difference is, is how they make their living. And so we apply that same concept. Got it. What keeps people from using a process like yours? Well, I think the very first thing that keeps people from that is one, knowing that it's even possible. They, uh, Wall Street and big banks have taught a very common process, one that is really largely helping them to do what they do. <laughs> hey, put your money with us so that what? It's a benefit to you. When you put money in a 401k, it's a benefit to you because now you get a match. It's going to grow tax deferred. Like they have sold you very well that this is good for you. But the question becomes, what do they do with that money while you're sitting around for the next 30 to 40 years? Do they just let it sit there and do nothing? Like it really is for your benefit only? Absolutely not. The number of fees that they collect is astounding. There's somewhere north of $6 trillion right now in 401k plans. And even at a very, a fraction of a percent of fees that might be associated with those, we're talking billions and billions of dollars in fees just for them to have your money in a 401k. So they have taught us very well to give up money and to just defer life and freedom until we're in our 60s and 70s. And then we'll give it back to you then with interest and growth and all these things. But by then, what have we given up? Like, what have we sacrificed? And I, I think, you know, you and I were talking pre-show about what happens to people later on in life. Maybe they've been successful in their career, but what have they given up? Potentially their health, potentially their marriages, because they work has become that mistress that I kind of started off telling you was becoming that for me, even in my twenties and thirties. Um, what those things are things we sacrifice instead of, uh, buying into the idea that man, freedom is possible today. I just have to recalibrate what I'm doing to align with that goal instead of this idea of retirement, which has never been a part of our vocabulary until you know, the, the late 1800s. All right. I'm going to jump in here because I, you can see that we're passionate about this and we can, <laughs> we can start going. You really, you ask one question and we answer four others that you haven't asked, asked us, but it's just because it, it flows out of us. But I, I want to go back to your question because I think it's a really good one. And I, and I don't want the person who's listening to this not to catch this because this is often not asked externally, but asked internally, right? Why doesn't everybody do this? Why wouldn't everybody follow that process? And we've actually asked that question because we, we've trained thousands and we asked that question, what do you believe is the biggest obstacle standing in your way from taking action, from being financially free? And I'm just going to give you a list of some of the responses. Well, the fear of the unknown. Well, um, Maybe the security of my nine to five, because I've been, been doing it this way for so long, I may just stick it out. Um, but the one that is, is probably at the heart of all of this, that very few will actually write down or tell us, but once we mention it, they go, yeah, that's it. You nailed it. It's my mindset. It's, it's what I've been taught. It's what I think about myself. And we, in this process, teach that, Lois, you are your best investment. That you have to invest in you in order for this process to work. And I think, unfortunately, so many people, as Joey started to say, have decided that they're not capable, that they're not able. And whether, not, whether that's something that they grew up believing or have learned through marketing, I don't know. 
have believed that it's not possible. And I, I would say being uncommon is difficult, right? Standing out. And, you know, as Christians, we, we talk about being salt and light, right? And, and we're not to lose our saltiness. And we're not to, um, you know, not be willing to be bold. And I, I think in the world, it's easier to do what everyone else is doing, to stand in the reassuring lie line instead of being the uncomfortable truth line. And, you know, we have clients all the time when they, they tell us that today I fired my boss or today mm -hmm. I quit my 401k or whatever their thing is that is the opposite of what the world has told them to do. They, they do it with excitement, but you can still see initially there's some trepidation in that statement because no one else typically around them is doing it. And that's the reason why we built the support piece. Because when you do get in an environment where it's safe, Simon Sinek does a talk on this, uh, and he talks about that fear, that, that circle of fear. And when we have the trusted people around us, how we feel comfortable, right? And we're always fearful to go outside of that circle because now we're introducing potential threats to us as individuals as compared to doing things as a group. And we know that that's to be true. So most people are, are fearful of doing something different until they're around others who are doing it and seeing success. And that was really the purpose of our podcast is to share the, the stories of people just like the person listening to this right now and to say, well, that person doesn't seem to be spectacular in any other way than just this. Like, they're just like me. I, they, they've, they've lived a very similar life that I have, but yet now they're talking about financial freedom today and not, not 20 or 30 years from now, I want what they have. And to me, that is the biggest fear that people face or challenge or risk that people face to follow this process. So Joey and Russ, our time is almost up. And what have we missed? What have we not fully discussed? What is it that is missing that people should know? I think the, the biggest thing is, is don't allow not knowing how stand in the way of you taking action, right? I think some people have analysis uh, paralysis and they say, well, I need to figure it all out before I can get started. The issue is, is, and, and this is a, I'll kind of uh, tag along with what Russ just mentioned about the importance of the support system the importance of the community that you keep is that there is a very good chance that people around you right now are not encouraging this because one, they've never heard about it, or they are dealing with the same obstacles that you are. Those are internal voices that are saying, you can't do this. This is crazy. You, you got to keep your safe job, like all those things. But that's why we created an online community because we, we know that your geography may be standing in the way. You need to have a group of people that are on the same path and they may not be right there next door to you. They may be two states over from you or three states over from you. And so we want people to be a part of that community so that they know we're not just these two crazy guys from Alabama doing this. There's a lot more people on this journey and you need to be a part of it. So we'd love for people to join that. If it's okay, I'd love to even please, provide a link. Please share with the audience. Well, and I, if it's all right, I'm going to share it, but I want to, one thing that I think that, that we missed and my wife gets onto me this all the time. So my wife, Lois is a dentist, very practical. And um, as you might imagine, spent a lot of times in very small, dark places <laughs> dealing in millimeters. So she always wants me to give specifics. <laughs> and I think we may have gave a few, but I, I always like to give a very practical application, something that someone could take away today and, and, and see tangible results because of it. And I'll give the link that will allow you to use this tool. Financial freedom is your passive income being greater than your monthly expenses. And that's easily said, not easily done. But the first step is to know where you stand in relationship to that. So you can know through that process exactly how close you are to financial freedom by just simply taking your passive income and dividing it into your monthly expenses. For instance, if I have zero passive income, 
the fact that my wife's a homeschool teacher, she's taught me that I always tell my kids that means no matter what you take zero and divide it into anything, it's always going to be zero. <laughs> right. So it doesn't matter if I have 5,000 expenses or 50,000 a month in expenses. But if I'm going to use an example that we all can follow. If I had $5,000 a month in monthly expenses and I had $500 a month in passive income, I would be 10% of the way there. And that's a really important thing to know for yourself, to know where you stand, because that's a number that you can track daily. That's a number you can impact monthly and annually. And so we have actually a tool that makes this simpler for you. It, so if you go to wealthwallstreet.com forward slash scorecard, we've actually built a online tool that you can use that will help you take all of the expenses and remember the ones that probably you forgot and put in your passive income. And it shows you as a percentage where you stand. And it's something you can print off as a PDF and you can go back and see as time goes on, but also that tool could be used as a way to make decisions of what you're going to do with money. Sometimes it's trying to eliminate a monthly expense and you can see how does it impact your score? Or maybe it's, maybe there's an opportunity to create a passive income. How does that impact my score as, as it relates to uh, financial freedom? And I think that that's a really impactful thing that we've seen in people's lives as they started tracking it and getting from zero, because that's where most people start, by the way. So don't feel like if you're at zero, that you are at zero. That's just where most people start. But also we've seen people get to 100% in very rapid times, less than a year. We've seen wow. people who, who've accomplished it in two years, some in four years, and some that may get there in six or eight years. But at the same time, when you consider the alternative, it may be an eternity maybe they'll never reach it. That's a great note to end on that it's possible. Um, you can start with zero and there are people who figure it out within a year. So even if it's not a year, that's not a reason to not get started because zero will stay zero as long as you, you take no action, right? Correct. Absolutely. So again, for the audience, People can go to wealthwithoutwallstreet.com. Is that correct? Forward slash scorecard. Forward slash scorecard. Okay. And we will also have information about you and your company in the show notes so people can get a hold of you um, following the podcast if they would like to do so. Thank you so much, Joey and Russ, for being with us today. I appreciate your thoughts. Financial freedom, boy, coming out of COVID, I think many people are wondering what's next and how do we survive the next hurdle that we might have. So I appreciate your, your input very much. Thank uh, you so much. It was a privilege to be on. And for those of you who are listening to Building My Legacy podcast today, thank you so much for being with us. Remember to visit our website as well at www.buildtomorrow.com. And I look forward to talking with you again very soon. Thanks, Joey and Russ. Thank you. Thank you for watching my video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell button above. Leave comments. We'd love to hear what you think and visit our other social media links as well. Thanks much.